We've seen state models already in the description of the operational modes tour. User interface testing is about testing all the elements of the user interface. Was this dialog implemented correctly? What about that menu? In specification-based testing, you test the program against the statements in the spec. Requirements testing is specification-based testing, but with a requirements spec. Some people think requirements specs are special compared to other specs. Consultants and process weenies often preach the idea that every requirement has to be precisely stated and easily verifiable. How nice for them. Before you buy that idea that you can do this for all your requirements, listen carefully to the examples they use. In my experience, many of the most important requirements and products that I've managed or tested were too complex to be stated in these trivially simplistic ways. Human needs are subjective, complex, ambiguous, and profoundly influenced by other needs and how well they're being satisfied. It's life. If you want to verify that the program complies with something like a standard, you have to make a list of everything that has to be verified and then work through the list. Configuration testing checks whether the program is compatible with the combinations of hardware and software that it's supposed to be able to work with. Localization testing checks whether a program has been successfully adapted for a different language or culture. This is coverage based if the way you organize your localization testing is to test against a list of changes, or a list of things that are commonly changed, or a list of things that commonly fail during localization. Now for the tester based techniques. User testing is about giving the program to a user to test. Alpha testing is usually done by programmers, early in development before anyone else gets to look at the code. Beta testing is typically done by people external to the company. There are different kinds of beta tests. They have different goals and you have to run them differently. For example, if you want usable feedback on the product's design, testing has to finish early enough to give developers time to use that feedback to change the design. Otherwise, it's pointless. On the other hand, if your beta tests are there to demonstrate the product to potential customers, you probably want to wait till the software is very stable, nearly finished. Otherwise, some of these customers are going to run away screaming. Bug bashes are testing events inside a company. For example, your company might invite anyone in the company to come test for an afternoon while they feast on pizza and beer. Now, some people really like these, but this is usually a very superficial look at the program. Think carefully about what you're likely to learn and not learn from an event like this. This is probably not the first time you've done this at your company. What did you learn last time? Set your management's expectations appropriately. Subject matter experts can provide valuable design suggestions, useful bug reports, but they can also demand changes that are impossible on any schedule or low priority to your actual stakeholders. Be cautious with these folks. They don't necessarily understand anything about product development. Your team may have to temper their input with some product development wisdom. Pair testing involves two people testing together. This may or may not mean that two people both watch the screen together for every test. Often people do separate but coordinated tasks. For example, to figure out how something works, one person might dig through the documentation while the other one plays trial and error with the program. Eating your own dog food involves using your own software to do real work. If the product is frustrating or unreliable, you get to cope with that first. This creates good stories for getting design weaknesses fixed. And this brings us back to localization testing. Localization testing is a tester-based technique if your emphasis in organizing the test is on who's doing the testing. Probably it's somebody who grew up in the target culture. Now, this is like all tester-based techniques. The focus is on who's doing the testing. What activities would be especially useful for them? What you expect their special knowledge their special skills to add to your knowledge of the program and its weaknesses. We'll focus on risk-based testing in the next lecture. All risk-based tests are focused on ways the program can fail. Boundary tests are focused on the mishandling of boundary values. For example, the program might accept values less than or equal to 5 when it's supposed to accept just values less than 5. One of the things that's special about quick tests is that you can run them when you start testing a product before you understand it well. Quick tests are designed around programming errors that are common. So common that you can easily imagine how to test for that kind of bug even though you don't know the program yet. A constraint test checks how the program deals with limits. Boundary tests are a simple example of constraint tests, but there are plenty of others. Try writing to an almost full disk, or emailing a barely too large attachment, 
we're doing a calculation that overflows memory set aside for that data type. Most of the constraint-based tests map to quick tests, but Jorgensen and Whitaker present ideas about constraint-focused thinking that I haven't seen in other discussions of quick tests. Most of the descriptions of logical expression testing that I read are coverage-oriented. But Brian Merrick explains his coverage rules in terms of the kinds of mistakes that programmers are likely to make. In his hands, this technique is focused on risk as well as coverage. What I mean by stress testing is intentionally working the product so hard that it will fail. We know it's going to fail. The question is, what will the failure look like? The goal is to figure out how to harden the program. In load testing, you see how the program performs after you reduce its access to system resources. Typically, you do that by overloading the system with input or with demands for work. People often think of stress testing, load testing, and performance testing together, but testers can study performance under a variety of loads. They might not be interested in how it works at its limits. Their goal is to understand the working system, to characterize it, not necessarily to bring it to failure. History-based tests look for bugs that have happened before, maybe before in this program or in some other program. Risk-based combination testing looks for bugs that you can only expose by testing several things together. For example, a program might handle large values for one variable well, but fail when you maximize several variables in the same test. Compatibility testing needs guiding limits because there are too many possible configurations to test. Risk-based compatibility testing establishes its limits by restricting its test to configurations that are more likely to give the program trouble. Interoperability testing checks how this product interoperates with, works with others. Usability testing is focused on the risk that the program is too hard to use. Long sequence regression is the simplest of the long sequence tests. In this case, you just reuse old tests, run them in a long randomized order, but without resetting the software before you run the next test. Consider a memory leak. You run the function once, no problem twice, no problem, but each time the function uses a little space and it doesn't free it. If you could use it a few hundred times, the program would run out of memory. Now you won't find a bug like that running a simple test that executes the code once. You have to run a long sequence that executes that function many times. Now for the activity-based techniques. I used to do guerrilla tests when a project manager told me not to test some part of a product because everybody knew it was stable code. I think the project manager has a right to prioritize services on his project, so I wouldn't defy him on this. But I would schedule a small amount of time, maybe half a day, for one of my staff to hammer that part of the product. No test documentation, no scripts, just pure risk-focused exploratory testing. Get in, see what damage you could do, get out. Most of the time we found nothing of interest, but sometimes we found problems, and in those cases, the project manager and I could reconsider the priority of that code. We'll look at all pairs testing in Lecture 6. Some people say random testing when what they really mean is unskilled testing done by an idiot. That's not what I mean. What I mean is testing that includes decisions made by a random number generator. Use cases rely on sequence diagrams that model a program's behavior. The diagram shows the user steps in the system's responses for achieving a goal. Use case tests work down the paths of the diagrams. Scenarios are hypothetical stories about how someone uses a program. Scenario tests check the stories. Installation tests check whether you can install, uninstall, and reinstall a program or an update. Regression testing uses old tests. You might have created these tests using any technique, but to turn a pile of old tests into a worthwhile regression suite, you have to select the most valuable tests, eliminate the redundant ones, and recode the tests you have selected to make them maintainable and efficiently reusable. Let me draw a distinction between regression testing done at the unit level and at the system level. Creating automated regression tests at the unit level is part of a normally efficient configuration management process. But at the system level, I value these tests much less. They're expensive, they're expensive to maintain, and they're not likely to reveal new information. Some project teams feel a need to have large system-level regression suites because old bugs keep reappearing in their projects. This is an important problem to manage, but it indicates a broken development process. You can't manage that with regression testing. 